Hello and welcome back to another episode of Willis Talk, Sunshine from Beyond, and this is definitely coming from beyond. <clears throat> this morning was an unusual. Not in the least. Everything was pretty much the same routine for the last six or so months. SSDD, at least that one program would call it. Same shit, different day. I hadn't worried about holidays, birthdays, none of it. I just had a mission. A mission to help others. I lived in an apartment located on the Lancaster Strip of Salem, Oregon. It had become, and even still, growing in drugs, homelessness, crime. Seemed to be no end to it. I cried so much at some of the stories. So many of the people just giving up. Not on others, not on the society. Those you can fix. Easily. So many of them giving up on themselves. Seeing no other way out from the vicious cycle that they had trapped themselves in. This morning seemed a little different, though. I felt there was something on the horizon. Perhaps good, perhaps ominous. Only the day would tell. Breakfast was good. Just a couple pieces of bacon was left and a piece of steak. Mainly leftovers for this morning. I wanted to get out of the door because I was already running late, or at least to my schedule. I had no job other than the one that I made myself. I left my apartment, locked it, and carried on about my business. Headed out and discovered I needed air in my tires. My closest air pump was over by Fred Myers, and that's where I would head. Freddy's was a nice convenience stop. I could pick up something for lunch as well. Maybe a sandwich. Sushi would be out of the question. I wouldn't have nowhere to keep it cool. And it would warm up today, I think, maybe a little bit. It was a bit nippy out this morning, though. I headed on over and found the air pump located just kitty corner of the gas pumps and right next to the propane. Thinking as I... Looked at the price, two fifty. Holy cow, it's gone up that much. Showing my age, it was only free when I had started as a kid. It went up to a dime, a quarter, a buck. Things do inflate. And can you really say you get anything for free, even then? As I bent over and started filling up my air, I heard a vehicle approach and felt an ominous presence behind me. It felt familiar, and I turned around and snapped too, 
faster than any drill sergeant had commanded me during the time that I was in the army. It was Big Red leaning out the passenger window. I had already had many experiences with her, all of them bad, all of them no good. She was a criminal, one of the high-ranking ones as far as I was concerned. She could just be a peon, but I perish the thought that there's someone more evil, more vindictive, more cutthroat than her. I had thought that someone like her would have been stopped a long time by Marion County Sheriff Department, or perhaps Salem PD. But she, even with her rap sheet longer than my arm, was still running around free. This woman was so low that she even attempted to sell her children, had them taken away by the state, sold drugs, stole cars. What kind of mischief was she up to right now? What kind of threats, which turned out to be promises, was she going to make to me today? As she leaned out the window, I snapped to and said, What the heck do you want? Now, now, keep yourself under control. I'm only here to deliver a message. A message. Yeah, what kind of message is what I was thinking. As she continued, in less than a week, there is going to be a dead prostitute laying flat in a hotel room. It's not going to be that shell game that you run around with. It's going to be someone else. Someone you don't know. Try to stop it. If you dare. I took that both as a challenge and as a scare to my entire soul. Never before had they threatened to kill a stranger that had nothing to do with anything that I was tending to. Most of the time it had been a loved one, a cherished one, a friend, a family member. But today it was someone else, someone that they wanted to show me their very power with. I thought for a time that maybe they're just buffaloing me, telling me lies. But I was soon to find out that it wasn't a joke. Soon I read that the hill had brutally raped, killed, and even returned to finish the job because the woman had not been offed. She laid on the floor in her blood helpless. She could have been saved. Or at least that's how the story goes. He returned in her car with her weapon of a tire iron. Killed her and left. After doing the most disgusting thing to her body. A sick, deprived man.
shortly after police from another jurisdiction picked him up. He did not even deny it. He did not even try to. He admitted the murder in cold blood, the rape, the defiling of a corpse. Allegedly, it was even filmed and broadcast. When I found out this news, It was horrifying. And I knew then that no matter what these individuals said, there was no escape. There was barely any defense. More in the next chapter.